What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about fasting. But before we get started, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you share the video because only you can prevent the spread of BS. This week, we're talking about intermittent fasting. Does it have no benefit? There are two new studies that came out, one in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is the most prestigious scientific journal in the world. It has an enormous impact factor, and this study was widely shared. And there was also another similar study in the Journal of Obesity. So we're actually gonna kind of review these studies together because quite frankly, they had very similar findings. We're just gonna jump straight into it. I'm gonna give you the, the gist of them because we need to go back afterwards and kind of uh, put this in context. The study in the New England Journal of Medicine was a 12 month study in 139 patients. So where are my people at that like, oh, the study wasn't long enough. And then the other ones are like, Oh, but it was only in 30 people. What y'all gonna say now? I'm assuming that the fasting window wasn't long enough, but you know, they always find something. They did 139 obese patients and they instructed them to either eat a certain amount of calories per day, just daily calorie restriction, or they had them uh, eat between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. In the other study, it was 12 weeks long, so not as long. It was in about 90 people and they had them eat either continuously throughout the day or in a 10 hour feeding window. So I'm sure everybody's gonna be like, oh, 10 hours, that's not intermittent fasting. And both these studies induced a caloric deficit of like 20 to 30% below the subject's maintenance calories. And they measured things like weight, body fat, fat mass, lean body mass, appendicular lean body mass. They measured markers of glycemia like HbA1c, HOMA IR, uh, they measured resting metabolic rate. Now, not all the measures were the same between the two studies, but these are measures that were done across both studies, and both studies had different measures of glycemia and overall health markers. So what did they find? Literally, in both papers, they found absolutely no difference between the group doing time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting and the group doing continuous meal feeding and daily calorie restriction. No significant differences on any variable measured. So when it came to weight and fat mass loss, both groups lost fat, both groups lost weight, both groups improved markers of glycemia, both groups improved blood lipids, but there was no differences between groups on any marker that was assessed. It led both sets of researchers to come to the same conclusion, which was time-restricted eating has benefits, but probably due to the fact that it causes people to eat less, that it's just a tool to restrict calories. Now, unfortunately, social media influencers and the mainstream media love to take stuff like this and just go crazy with headlines. So there were headlines like, new study shows intermittent fasting has no benefit. New study shows intermittent fasting doesn't work. That's not what the study showed. And unfortunately, some of you out there straw man me and my argument saying, why are you always crapping on intermittent fasting? Why do you say intermittent fasting doesn't work? I know it worked for me. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It absolutely works. The people in these studies lost weight. They lost body fat. They improved their markers of health. Look at me, look at me. Intermittent fasting is a completely reasonable way to lose weight. In fact, for some people, it's a great tool. Unfortunately, because weight loss and what works in terms of adherence for people appears to be extremely individual, people will find something that worked for them in terms of it felt easy, it felt less restrictive, and assume that everyone will be the same. I can tell you that's not the case. In fact, in these two papers, there was also no difference in dietary adherence between the two groups. And one study measured future probable adherence based on people's feedback and found no difference either. So on a population level, across the averages of the population, people don't seem to find intermittent fasting any easier than daily caloric restriction. However, that does not mean intermittent fasting might not be easier for you as an individual. It doesn't mean that low carb might be easier for you as an individual. But when it comes to the actual randomized control human studies, we just don't see differences. And people like Rhonda Patrick 
have come out and tried to pick apart this paper and say, well, the feeding window was this, and you know, you need this and this and that. That would be fine. If it didn't also fit with dozens of other human randomized control trials showing the exact same thing, as well as meta-analyses of human randomized control trials, as well as human randomized control trials of other more extreme forms of intermittent fasting like the 5-2 diet and alternate day fasting, which show the same dang thing. And in fact, in the alternate day fasting, they showed a considerable loss of lean body mass. Now, what I will say from this data is I used to say that I thought, based on our data regarding muscle protein synthesis, that intermittent fasting was not good for lean body mass. I don't think I can make that claim with the standard way intermittent fasting is done, which is in a eight hour feeding window. In the studies looking at an eight hour feeding window of intermittent fasting with exception of maybe one study, they don't show differences in lean body mass between the groups. And this is even holds true in resistance trained people. There are multiple studies by Grant Tinsley showing that if people trained within their eight hour feeding window, that there was no loss of lean body mass. So I feel relatively comfortable in saying that I don't think the eight hour feeding window intermittent fasting style is probably bad for lean body mass. I think it's probably okay but other more extreme forms of fasting may produce losses of lean body mass. But what we can say with relative certainty, because we can never be completely certain of anything in science, is that when calories are equated, there does not appear to be an additional benefit from intermittent fasting or alternate day fasting. And for those of you who like to say, but what about autophagy, bro? First off, 99% of you using that word don't even know what it means. And guess what increases autophagy just fine? You you guessed it, regular old calorie restriction. And there is no evidence that intermittent fasting or any form of fasting produces greater autophagy than daily calorie restriction when weekly calories are equated. Well, how could that be? Let's say you're doing alternate day fasting, but you're equating for weekly calories between daily calorie restriction and alternate day fasting. Well, sure, on your fasting days, your calorie intake is nothing, so your autophagy will probably be higher. And then on your feeding days, you're eating twice as much. So guess what? Your autophagy is gonna be more significantly inhibited than people who are just doing daily calorie restriction, even though their autophagy levels might not be as high compared to people doing alternate day fasting on fasting days. At the end of the week, it's probably gonna work out the dang same. It's a tool, it's not magic. The only tools, are people who think intermittent fasting is magic. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, make sure you comment for the algorithm, or if you're a fasting zealot and you just hate this study because you like your feelings more than data, make sure you leave a comment, tell me how much I suck, and I'll catch you next week.